Today I will show you how to add the bokeh effect in Photoshop, so let's start! Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you a few different ways how you can add a bokeh or bokeh effect in Photoshop if you don't have opportunity to do that in a camera. And as you already know, you can create a bokeh effect in a camera or in a post-production. To create it in a camera, you need to use really, really shallow depth of field. To use really wide aperture, for example, f1.2 or f1.4 or 1.8. So uh, to do that, uh, the best lenses are a fixed lens, so 50 millimeter lens or 85 millimeter lens and so on. So if you don't have opportunity to use that kind of lenses and or you don't have a camera but you have a photo that you want to make it even more interesting by adding that bokeh effect, today I will show you how to do that in post-production. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, this is our image for today. As you can see here, we already have some bokeh effect uh, from the camera and those are those lights that are out of focus uh, in a background. So, for example, you want to make this image even more interesting by adding even more of that bokeh effect. You can do that in a few different ways. First and most easiest way is to find some uh, bokeh image online and just place it over the top of this one. So I will show you how to do that. I have this image and this is really nice uh, image of some lights that are out of focus and as you can see it's really really shallow depth of field so I will just copy this image go back and paste it right here I will make it a little bit bigger with Control command T just not so big right I will make it just a touch bigger like so and I will press OK and now I will put this uh, layer into a screen blending mode to get rid of those dark black colors right or I can put it maybe in a linear dodge if I want more pronounced effect or even light and blending mode but those blending modes works the best with this kind of with this kind of image so now I can place a mess to this and just with a regular brush just regular soft brush I can just paint over the model if I don't want to have that effect on a model so I can I can do that I can maybe leave here if I want just as a really nice effect and that's it of course you can always add some adjustment layer maybe hue and saturation clip it to affect only this bokeh let's name this like so and you can change the hue the hue of this uh, bokeh effect or the saturation too or you can even uh, change something like this you can put a mask just use uh, use uh, lasso for example lasso tool and just play put lasso over this part portion of the image and fill it with the black by pressing alt or option key if your black color it's a foreground color alt, alt or option key with the backspace and that's how you can how you can fill uh, this portion of a selection and then you can use another hue and saturation adjustment layer clip it here and maybe copy this mask and invert it with Control or command i so you have now inverted mask and you can then change the hue of this portion of uh, this bokeh effect if you like that maybe you want to make it sorry maybe you want to make it something like this less saturated i don't know it's absolutely your choice so i will leave it like so and let me show you let's group this in a group and let's name this bokeh one all right and this is before and this is after before and after right guys this was the first and most obvious way how you can add a bokeh effect in photoshop you can really go online and find a lot of different uh, images of uh, that bokeh effect and just place it over the top of your image and just tweak it a little bit so the second way that i want to show you how to create it it's to create a custom bokeh brush and then just paint that effect over the top of your image so let's do it all right for that we will need let's hide this we will need a new document i will press ctrl or command n and i will choose 2000 by 2000 pixels this is what i will choose it's absolutely optional 
uh, the higher document, the bigger maximum amount, maximum size of the brush will be. And I will create uh, some specific shape brush. You know that, let's go back to, to this document. You can see that uh, this uh, shape of those lights are not perfectly uh, rounded. And you have some bokeh effect that it's maybe like a pentagon shape or hexagonal shape or and so on and so on. And the shape of the bokeh effect depends of the lens type, the number of aperture blades and so on and so on. For this, I will create something like almost circular bokeh effect. So let's go back to our new empty document and I will use custom shape, uh, yeah, custom shape brush actually, custom shape in Photoshop maybe uh, this ellipse tool. If you're not familiar with the shape tool in Photoshop, you can watch my tutorial about that right here and uh, be more uh, informed about that. So I will use this uh, shape tool with the elliptical tool here, press and hold shift to create a perfect circle for now, something like so. And then I will go right here at the top and I will choose as a fill color some dark gray, maybe like so. And I will go to the stroke and choose black color as a stroke and make it, this is not black, sorry, black color and make it wider, something like this. Of course, you can create any kind of shape for a bokeh effect, for the bokeh brush. You need to experiment and to try different options, different shapes for different kind of photos. Maybe you want to create a few brushes, one it's circular, one it's hexagonal and so on and so on. All right, and all what you need to do, I will just hide the background here, it's to go to edit and define brush preset and I will rename this bokeh, all right? And that's it. Now when I uh, go back to my document, this is not, but we will use this photo too. When I go back to my document, create a new empty layer and use a brush just like this, I can create really nice a bokeh effect, but this is not good because I need to tweak some settings uh, in this brush because when I paint it, I will have like regular brush. So to tweak a brush settings, just press F5 on the keyboard like so, and let's go from the start, brush tip shape. So I want to go all the way down to the spacing and I want to in increase the spacing a lot, something like so. I can always check the spacing, that's really nice, let's undo it. I can make brush smaller or bigger. That's nice. Then I want to go to shape dynamics and I want to increase this size jitter. That means that I will have variation in size. As you can see, I have some variation uh, in, in size of those circles, right? That's great. And I want to change the roundness. I don't want to have perfect circle. So I, I will change the roundness here and I will go with the angle all the way up. So I'll have variation in the angle too. The roundness, it's maybe a little bit too much, but maybe not, something like so. Let's undo it. And then let's go to scattering. I will scatter this a little bit and I can change the count of the scattering. I will say, for a start, let's say two, right? And let's see how this looks. It's not bad at all, right? Yeah, we can paint with that and create really nice and interesting effect. And let me show you. Now, if I paint here like this, I will have really nice bokeh effect and we will blur it a little bit and remove from the model. But if I want to change the color of this, if I want to have a variation of colors in all of these different uh, circles, I can go again to brush properties, pressing F5 and go here to color dynamics tab. And this first slider, foreground to background jitter, that means that it will change the color in every circle between the foreground and background color. Let me show you. If I put this all the way up and I move this, it will tweak. Sorry, I need to go with a huge jitter all the way to the zero. It will mix those two colors, foreground and background, and it will change between those two colors. And that's really nice because maybe you want some color variation. But if you want even more color variation, you will go here to hue jitter and put it a little bit. You can just experiment how the, with the amount of this huge jitter. Maybe if you go all the way up, you will have some crazy, crazy colors like so, but maybe you want just a small amount and you will have something like so. And I like it something maybe like 10, I don't know, maybe a little bit more. Let me see. Mm, 
something like maybe 11. And then I can just go here and paint some bulky effect. Then I can create a new layer, maybe use a smaller brush, paint here with a smaller brush like so, maybe bigger at the top. And now, let me see, now I can, I can have fun with those two layers. I can go, let's hide the first one, go to the this uh, bottom one, go to the filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just, let's zoom it, just blur it a little bit, as you can see, not too much, just maybe one or so pixels with uh, this image. If you have a bigger image, you will need to blur it a little bit more. If you have a smaller image, in size smaller, you need to blur it less. So something like this, and let's go to this one, Let's go again, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I will blur it a little bit more. Let me see something like, like this, why not? Then I will put this in a group, press Ctrl command G and put a mask on that group so I can erase with a regular brush. Let's go here, regular brush and erase the effect of the model here, like so, maybe I will leave it this and I can put both of these layers or a group, but I will put both of these layers in a screen blending mode and that's really nice. Or I can put it in a linear dodge blending mode and have this really, really nice effect. I can change the opacity of that and so on. So that's another way how you can add, let me show you before and after, before and after. And of course you can add again the hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to this group and change the, the hue of that, change the saturation change the lightness, maybe you want white color or darker colors. Really, it's up to, to you, to your choice and your taste. So you can really add really nice effect before and after, before and after. Right, guys, that was the second method, how you can create a custom brush and just paint the bokeh effect over the top of your image. Experiment with that, create a different shape of custom brushes, try to tweak those uh, brush settings to have different uh, effect and you can create really nice, really nice effect to impact your image, to make your image a lot more interesting. And now I will uh, show you the third and the final method for today, how to add another uh, really, really interesting bokeh effect to your imaging, image using another image. So let's do that. All right, for the last method, let's, let's group all of this first together and let's name it Poke number two, right? And let's use next image and this is the image. Basically, you can use any image that you want and try experiment, you will see it basically doesn't matter. I will just copy this image and paste it over the top of this one. Make it just a little bit bigger like so. And now I will go to filter, blur gallery and I will use a field blur. And as you can see, we have on the right side this uh, blur slider, so it will make our image more or less blurry. And down below we have a bokeh effect. So we have a light bokeh and bokeh color and this light range. So light bokeh, it will create a bokeh, bokeh effect based, uh, based on the lights on the image. So you can change the amount of the blur, change the amount of this effect and the range slider, you can change the range of the luminosity where the bokeh will be present, uh, yeah, where it will be applied. So, as you can see, by tweaking those settings, you can create a different feel of that bokeh effect, right? I will use maybe something like, like this, and let me show this uh, bokeh color. It's to add a more color variation to your image. So I will maybe add just a little amount of the color, something like so, and let me see. And I will press OK. I'm satisfied with this. I will press OK. And now I will just go and put this layer into maybe screen blending mode, like so, and add levels or curves, doesn't matter. Clip it to this layer and just boost the blacks, right? Something like, like so. And then I will move this layer all the way up, for example, like so, to use this portion of of this uh, bokeh effect. And then I will uh, select both of those layers and the levels and copy it with Control Command J. Then I will press Control Command T to go to free transform mode and right click, flip vertical. And then I will just move it, maybe make it bigger, I don't know, something like this. I can even copy it one more time, then 
press control command T, make it smaller, rotate it, use on this side right here, and so on and so on. Let me see, maybe like so. And then I can use a mask and I can use a mask separately on both of the uh, of all three layers or I can group all three layers into one group, put a mask on it and just paint over the top where I don't want my effect to be to be visible, something like like this. And that's how you can create another bokeh effect using any basically any kind of image if you use different image you will have different bokeh effect try experiment with a different kind of images so let me see let's rename this bokeh number three and that's it that's three completely different ways how you can add a bokeh effect on your images in photoshop to make them even more interesting and of course you can combine few of those methods together into one for example you can maybe Combine first one with the third one to create really nice and interesting image. And maybe this is too much for you. You can lower the opacity of one effect or just place a layer mask on that and just erase uh, something that it's too much for you. So it's up to you to experiment, to have fun, to uh, create a lot of different custom brushes for uh, this bokeh effect, to paint that bokeh effect your images and so on and so on. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. If you want to support me and this channel to make it even bigger and better to create even more interesting tutorials, you can do that by checking my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. See you guys in the next fun episode. Bye bye.